Robert, would you like to tell us about uh, this amazing original that seems to have captivated so many people's attention? Hi, Brad. <laughs> Brad's my good friend. I appreciate uh, you talking to me and, and allowing me to talk to you. Um, this is about, I don't know, a year and a half in the making, called Magical Mystery Tours, Brad. And uh, it really covers quite a few songs um, in one uh, sort of pain and in one real uh, magical mystery tour, I suppose. It, uh, it has become that, from the Eggman up in the, up in the top to uh, Sexy Sadie over here to the Yellow Submarine. It, uh, it's meant to uh, display the majesty of many songs. Uh, it's set in the British countryside of uh, northern England, around Liverpool, which I just visited recently uh, on my uh, tour of the, uh, the Beatles' home sites and where they first played and where they first met. And, um, but really, I finished this before I went. Um, we have the walrus. We have uh, Mean Mr. Mustard over here in the top top hat. And of course, these are just my interpretations of the uh, the songs, my personal interpretations of how I I see a particular song. Uh, some of them I see surrealistically. Some of them I see realistically. Things are meant to symbolize Apple Records and a violin to symbolize the orchestra which they brought into rock and roll. I have even hidden portraits of all four Beatles. Uh, John is here and George over there and obscurely Ringo behind a starfish and Paul McCartney down, down here. And we have uh, another violin that's actually melting. And we have strawberry fields forever descending onto the, uh, the landscape, which is, is exploding with electricity, a lightning storm, uh, and the foreground of the uh, landscape, which, of course, makes a lot of sense. And most of this series is about the, six, the late 60s, after the Beatles became the most popular band ever. They started going into surrealism. And... Uh, I think it was really John who, who did that. And his influence really was, was Bob Dylan, who was doing that before the Beatles. He credits Dylan. Um, but this sort of covers that period of time from 66 through 1970 until they, until they broke up. Uh, all those songs, most of these songs that I'm talking about and most of the songs that I've illustrated in this painting are from that period, the, uh, the late 60s. And that changed everything. The Beatles changed everything. They changed popular culture. They changed music. They changed it all permanently. And I was, uh, I was uh, 10 years old. So I, I was really, uh, in 65, majorly influenced by it. My older brothers were Beatle fanatics. So I, uh, and I, of course, I saw them in the Ed Sullivan Show in 64. Um, the Beatles, that was another way they changed the world. Um, after John Kennedy was shot in November 63, they came out in February of 64, and, and it just lifted the, uh, lifted the world after the depression of uh, him being shot so dramatically in public. <clears throat> I think the Beatles really helped us uh, get through the 60s. Tribute collection. How many Beatles paintings have I done? Probably including miniatures. Oh, 25 or 26. This is the, uh, the biggest one by far. Yeah, this is uh, back in the USSR on top. And uh, I think it was the Beatles' answer to, uh, to the Beach Boys' uh, California Girls. I, 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 some, somebody said that um, the Beatles wanted to do their version, and it, and it has kind of the same sound. But I love that song, and really all of these Beatles paintings are my interpretations of the song. What I hear, um, I'm trying to convey on, on canvas. This is what I see when I hear the songs, emotional responses to, to the music. The Long and Winding Road, which is one of my 
favorites. It's such a beautiful song. There's a thing I didn't mention. There's so many things hidden in them. Like here's a portrait of John Lennon, a profile, and the actual title is is here, the long and winding road, hidden in the uh, within the grass. But there uh, titles are hidden in every single one of the uh, the major pieces. And by major pieces, I consider them the big one, the Magical Mystery Tour, and all the other 24 by 24 squares. There's a lot of other insignificant ones. But I, I was just trying to capture the feeling of a British countryside uh, with a road that sort of never ends. You can't see the end. And this was influenced by uh, probably Peter Brugel, one of my favorite uh, Dutch artists, and, and some Rembrandt. Rembrandt did, did, didn't do too many landscapes, but uh, but if he did, this is how he would do them. Because <laughs> <laughs> he loved the Beatles as well. Everybody knows that. <laughs> I, I, Simon, I have a couple of Beatles books here that I'm going to sign for you and your wife. I hope you enjoy them, and I hope to meet you soon.